Hello everyone, Flex here. And today, I wanted to discuss about what I think about the features that are currently inside of Flowscape 2. Now when I say features for this video, I'm, I am not referring to any in-game maps, and I'm not referring to anything community related, I'm talking specifically about the things that are inside of FE2 that are outside of playing the maps, uh, the things that enhance the quality and experience of playing the game. Now, I'm not going to cover every feature since some of these features are too insignificant or irrelevant at this point to be worth talking about. I'll be covering the features that I think have the biggest positive and negative impacts to the playing experience. Basically, I'll be li listing these FE2 features and explaining why they're good or bad and I'll also be giving my own thoughts on some of the how some of the more flawed features can be changed and uh, how they can be improved to boost the Flowscape 2 game experience. But we will first start off with the good features that are in the game, and I think there are a lot of them. The first being the voting system, which in my opinion is one of the best features that are currently in FE2. And the reason is pretty simple, there are, uh, because uh, there's always going to be maps that people would prefer to play more than others, and I think the voting system does a great job of balancing between allowing people the freedom to choose what maps they want to play, while also cycling through maps so that they all get uh, so that all of the maps get played at some point. Uh, basically, how the work voting system works is you have eight options or map selections uh, given a certain map difficulty, sorted by how long they haven't been played for, and the uh, top three maps that haven't been played for a while will be free to be voted on. Uh, while the next five selections are maps that were more recently played, but you can still unlock the vote for them by paying some coins. And uh, maps outside of the top eight maps, or the map that was most recently played, will be on cooldown. And you can also stack votes with coins if you really wanted to play a certain map. And in addition, if a map hasn't been voted on for a particularly long time, pre-votes will be added to it until there's enough for the map to win the voting round and be played. Uh, now, some people don't like these pre-votes, uh, especially if it's a map that most people hate, but it's personally I'm cool with it, and it, uh, it's not because I like it, but I, I would understand why Crazy Blocks would add pre-votes, because some players, like uh, the few who would want to play the map, or the new players, may never get the opportunity to even play the map if it never gets voted. I mean, it, it's important to note that even if certain features may not benefit a majority of players, they are uh, they are necessary, since... Uh, they do serve purpose in balancing the game. So overall, I think the voting system is a is a W. And another feature that I think has been great uh, are the community highlights. Uh, those are technically FE2 maps, uh, and I said I will be excluding those, but uh, most of them are temporary. They don't actually get permanently added in the game. And essentially, uh, they are still community maps, and I really like that. Crazy Blocks is giving community creators a chance to shine and showcase their maps in the game because, uh, and maybe even get a chance to get their maps permanently added. And I also think it's a great feature uh, just because playing the same in game maps can sometimes get old. And so uh, these community highlights uh, would really allow the game to be consistently refreshed of if uh, new ideas and concepts from the community. Uh, there are some other features I wanted to give brief mentions to, uh, mostly simple ones, but they help boost the game experience more than people give credit for. Uh, group buttons are great for encouraging more people to stop being lazy and get more buttons, and they also give more XP than normal buttons, which is uh, pretty nice. Uh, the XP boost beacons are great since it allows people to progress and level up faster during the time for when the majority of players have the most free time. Uh, daily challenges are pretty cool if uh, you wanted to earn some extra gem rewards, although some of these challenges are a little weird to say the least. And Ghost Players is probably the most underrated feature just because it prevents your screen and vision from being blocked by the other players playing the map with you, unless you set it to all players mode, in which case you're a psychopath. So yeah, there's a lot of great features that I think were great additions by Crazy Blocks. But here's where I wanted to start get getting into some of the more flawed features and the suggestions that I would make to make to improve them. Uh, first, I wanted to give a mention to game modes, and I'm not saying game modes in the game are a bad thing. In fact, I think it's one of the most important and the best features. Uh, because it's great for allowing you to play in the way you want to play. I personally like chaos mode a lot because of the overall atmosphere of playing with a lot of other players and also the challenge factor of every button being group button 
except for the first one, which is understandable because it, it helps prevent server crash, even though Chaos servers will still crash eventually for some reason because of shitty Roblox servers. And if the different play paces players go at, there's lots of runs where you'll you end up being a little late and as a result you will die more, but there's a lot of frustration in dying more, especially if you're in a lazy Chaos server. It's also equally satisfying to pull off chaos survivals in the chaos server. A thing that would improve chaos servers, however, would be to patch skips that completely skip map sections. And I know people complain when crazy patches shortcuts because it makes playing the maps far less practical, but I'm talking about skips that allow players to completely skip buttons. And because when, when people are using these skips, uh, they skip these buttons and and that means that not enough people are going to press them and then a lot the entire server dies as a result take fallen for example where there's a skip that pretty much allows everyone to skip buttons two to four and then fallen becomes pretty much a death sentence in the chaos server as a result because uh, because of the number of people who are not pressing buttons two to four as a result of taking the skip i, I know people may not like skip patches but then skips ruin the experience for everyone else I, they do deserve to be removed in my opinion Another thing I really don't like relating to Chaos servers are the way that people play in it. And part of the reason is because of a method called tab glitching, which basically allows a player to freeze in their spot until max time. And this type of glitching really, I, I just find it really pointless. Uh, but besides trolling purposes, like they often kill the entire server because uh, they're not contributing to pressing bruh, any buttons. Bruh, and then bruh, they waste bruh, everyone's time by tab bruh, glitching bruh, until max bruh, time bruh, until after bruh, everyone else has died. Bruh, uh, bruh, and and bruh, this, it's just bruh, really frustrating. Bruh, bruh. So personally, I wish, I wish there was just some kind of like report or anti-cheat system. Like not 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 like that that anti-cheat system where which kills everyone upon them moving, but like just to prevent the usage of this method. That, that would just personally be a way that I think chaos servers can be improved for uh, significantly for everyone. Uh, as for game modes in general though, I, another thing I don't like are the pro server requirements. Uh, and if you forgot what they were, basically you need to be level 50, you have to be all insanes, your account must be at least 14 days old, and you also need a daily challenge. And I get the reasoning behind these requirements, the levels are for experience, the insane maps are for skill, and the 14 day account is to prevent trolling. But I personally think that the re requirements should be more flexible. For example, level 50 is much too high in my opinion. Like you would need to play at least three months to make it there or something. I, I would set it back to 30, which was the old requirement. And I think that the skill requirement should not be limited just to just insane maps. It makes no sense for crazies not to be included when it comes to that requirement. They should make it like as long as you've been like at least 10 insane plus maps you can enter a pro server and there are 10 insane maps in the game so uh, and the two week account requirement is fine but i also think they should remove you they could remove the daily challenge requirement because all that requirement really does is prevent players from jumping right into pro servers and i don't really see the point of that i think it's i think it's just annoying some other features in FE2 that I wanted to bring up, and I still think they have their flaws, but I actually have recently kind of grown to like them, and I'm talking about the agility mechanics. I still prefer doing normal parkour over agility gameplay, like sliding and zip lines, but when used right, they can be a nice complement to a map that could use some extra variety. Uh, two, two updates that I think have really improved these agility features are air dive and auto sliding. I'm really glad to say I was wrong about air dive when it came when it first came out and I said it was useless. Uh, after playing the game for a while, there there are several ways it could be applied if you wanted to optimize your speed in certain maps. And auto sliding can be quite useful, especially for beginners who may not be accustomed to pressing an extra key to slide inside of a map. I think these updates have really made playing maps more convenient. And over the last couple of years, the slide positions in the in-game maps have been adjusted to me to be made less awkward, though there are still a couple of exceptions. I still think there is improvement that could be made when it comes to agility, however, and that's for sliding and ziplines to be extended to every in-game map instead of just uh, hard to crazy maps. And my reasoning to the people who may be asking why is this necessary uh, is because I, I just think right now agility feels kind of limited to just hard to crazy maps. Yeah, there's, and yet there's a lot of community maps and in-game highlight maps that are 
in the normal easy and normal difficulties that have these mechanics. And sh shimmering, shimmering Delta is a great example of this, and in fact, Retrocoast is also an easy map of agility that has already been added permanently in the game. So, so the real question should be why not? Because I think agility should be a feature that should be made available for all maps, just in my opinion. Anyway, so far every feature I've talked about has been pretty good, and there's not really anything I have major complaints or suggestions for, but finally, we have made it to the two features that you all were most likely waiting for and the two features that I wanted to talk about the most, and that is the intensity system and the event system. And we'll first, first start off with the intensity system update, which I will call the former worst feature in the game. Uh, we'll get to the event system later. And I will say there is one good thing about the intensity system, and it's, it's that it created a very organized numerical system that determines how the difficulties are going to be calculated. Basically, basically the difficulty is re represented by a number or an intensity value with the intensity 1 to 1.99 being easy, going all the way up to 5 to 5.99 for crazy. But how the system actually works is a whole different story, and the thing most people have a problem with. You see, with the old difficulty system in 2020, it was solely based on the percentage of people who survived, and the percentage itself would determine whether the difficulty would go up, stay the same, or go down. And it wasn't a perfect system or anything, but it did it, but it did its job well. For example, if eight out of ten survived a normal map, the difficulty would increase to hard, and if you paid paid gems, you could lock the difficulty to the highest categories of insane and crazy. However, the way the intensity system works is that the difficulty changes by taking the intensity of the current round, adding the percentage of people who survive, and then subtracting by a difficulty constant. And for example, if 10 out of 10, survive, 10, out of 10 players survive a hard map with the intensity at 3.5, the intensity goes plus 1, minus 0 0.6, because that's the difficulty constant for hard. And so the intensity increases by 0 0.4, making the intensity 3.9, Meaning the next maps, you guessed it, stays in the hard difficulty. And you can see the problem here. Like, the intensity system uh, has made the difficulty progression far too slow, and it takes forever for the difficulty along the intensity to go up or down. And so in a solo server, in fact, it, assuming you survive every round with the old difficulty system, it will take five maps before you reach a crazy map. But with the intensity system, it takes ten maps. Bruh. Another part about the intensity system that sucks uh, is that they removed Lock to Insane and replaced it with Intensity Boost, and you have to pay 5 gems just to increase the intensity by 0 0.5. While there is compensation in that since there's more ways to earn gems now than there were back then, it does feel like it becomes impossible to actually progress beyond the insane difficulty without a person having to boost the difficulty. Just because the system seems to go against increasing the intensity the higher you get, as well as the fact that you can't manually change the difficulty as much as you could with the old difficulty system. You can you can stack intensity boosts, but the amount of gems would, uh, it will cost will grow exponentially, and it costs double in Chaos servers for some reason too. With that being said, although the intensity system has re received a lot of backlash and the workings of it are suboptimal to say the least, most people seem to have moved on as if they accepted it even though even though they don't like it. But if I were crazy blocks and I could make a few changes and, in su and suggestions for the intensity system, here's what I would do. First, I would add the pro lock back and maybe even a crazy lock for chaos and pro servers. Mostly because a plus 0 0.5 boost barely does anything to the difficulty in general. And that's not saying the intensity boost should be removed. I, I mean, I, I think it should be added as an additional option to boost the intensity. I, I, because if there, I, I feel like if there were more options or ways to boost the intensity, it would help speed up the difficulty progression a lot in a more convenient way. Secondly, I've thought about how the intensity was calculated and, and I thought that could use a change. And I devised a simple but effective new way that the intensity could be calculated that would make it more fair for the majority of players. Uh, and I, I'm gonna show the equation on the screen and explain what it does. Basically, what this would do is decrease the intensity by one if no one survives and in increase it by one if everyone survives. And while also putting a cap on the crazy difficulty. 
This system could also be useful since the new intensity wouldn't be limited to only adding just 0.35 or something for each map survival and it would also be better in the long run in case new difficulties like crazy plus or extreme would be added since they wouldn't be so hard to get to. This would also greatly benefit all players especially solo players in progressing up the difficulties faster. Also the reason I replaced the difficulty constant in my own version is of the intensity system is because I don't really see the point of it. I know Crazy Blocks is trying to imitate a similar system with old FE2. There are only certain percentages in each difficulty to determine whether the difficulty goes up or down. But with the new crazy difficulty, it just doesn't work that well because you're adding a lot of new crazy maps in the game and people want to play these crazy maps, yet there's no really there's no practical way to actually get to the crazy difficulty nor stay in it. Uh, in any multiplayer server without forcing players to spend gems and boost the intensity. Unless you're expecting uh, a multiplayer server to survive uh, at a rate higher than 65% every round. Which in other words, I think the difficulty con constant is kind of a re redundancy because logically speaking, less people are going to survive maps in the higher difficulties anyway. So why subtract even more from the intensity in the first place? Although the system wouldn't be perfect by any means, essentially it allows for more difficulty rotation and, and it also speeds up the progress for all different types of players in a more positive direction. And that is going to cap off my personal suggestions for the diff intensity system. I don't know how this would actually play out, but it honestly can't really be a downgrade from the system that we really that we have in game at the moment. And now for the event system. Oh God, the event system. I'll first explain what it is before I continue with uh, what I think about it. How the event system works is every three rounds or two, if it's insane or crazy, there will be an event that occurs during the map. And the event is randomly selected. It could be Lost Pages, which is a metaverse event that gives you XP if you find a lost page. Escapee Missions, which gives you gems if you successfully rescue the escapee. Random group buttons, which randomly make all buttons in the map either normal or group. Fog, which covers the map with fog. Mirrored mode, which inverts the map so that you play in a reflected view of it. And exploding buttons, which makes all buttons explode on the timer when they are pressed, and they will kill you if you are in range of the explosion when the button goes off. Now theoretically, this sounds like a pretty wild idea that makes FE2 more interesting, but instead, the event, what the event system has done has kind of been a mess. And I'll start off with the good first, as usual. First, uh, good first, as usual. And I do not have a problem with the escapee missions or the lost page event rounds. And that's because the, these events reward you for finding an object, whether it's a lost page or an escapee. And I especially like how the escapee also counts as a person when getting group buttons, which is a nice detail in the event feature. And secondly, they provide a bit of an extra challenge for survival, since you have to go out of your way to get these objects, which means you have to pick them, pick up your own pace to beat the flood pace, depending on what the map is. I also don't have a problem with random group buttons, but it's kind of a useless event if I'm being honest, since it doesn't really do much besides forcing an extra person to get certain buttons. Maybe I I could maybe you could maybe the event could be changed to all buttons or group buttons since that might be a little more impactful and also encourage pressing buttons more. But that's just me. And uh, the main points I wanted to talk about are the other three events. And I'm going to be very honest here when I say that the rest of the events, all of them kind of suck. And first off, the fog event. And I know the idea of the event is so that it's hard to see where to go, but that's pretty much exactly the main issue here. With the game updating itself constantly with new community highlights in this fog event, it basically becomes impossible to actually play new community highlight maps in the game when you're meeting the maps the first few times, when there's fog everywhere, preventing you from seeing or learning where to go. And while fog does add an atmosphere to certain maps, and a lot of other maps, fog just makes the maps look ugly and worse than it used to be. But Fog is far from the worst event that exists, and I know that I said I like the challenge factor of mirrored mode as an event, and I, I stand by that statement that it could be a fun event. Most of the time, it's not fun, and it's just plain annoying, and I said most of the time only because sinking ship exists. Mirrored mode makes just about every map unsight readable, and you end up going in the wrong direction every five seconds and die because of it. And I do appreciate that the hardest maps in the game aren't mirrored, but still, 
uh, mirrored mode is can easily throw everyone off and make everyone die as a result. But the actual worst event and, and the, the most unfair event I have ever seen is exploding buttons, especially in the insane and crazy difficulties. Then exploding, then exploding buttons first came out. It was pretty much useless because of how pathetic the explosion range and timer was. But after this event got buffed in the insane and crazy maps, it's pretty much made maps unplayable. The buff especially has made the range way too big, the timer way too short, and now exploding buttons have become a behemoth that kills everyone who comes even close to a button that was pressed like 0.2 seconds ago. And as a result of this buff, there are many notorious exploding button locations now that basically kill everyone in the server, which directly leads to people not deciding not to go for these buttons every time, because every time a person risks going near a button, chances are they will die. Which basically means the only thing exploding buttons actually do is discourage people from pressing buttons. And that also causes people to die. And all of that is the reason why, in my opinion, exploding buttons along with the event system as a whole is currently the most disastrous feature in FE2. So how do we fix the event system? Well, I'm not crazy blocks and I'm not a game developer, but I think it's very clear that we need to remove exploding buttons as a whole. It's pretty much useless in the easy to hard difficulties, and it's unfair in insane and crazy maps. And there are, there are some maps where exploding buttons can be vi viable, but I just see too little benefit or enjoyability in this event to, for it to have potential to actually work out and stay in the game. Mirrored events, however, are they're, they're an interesting case because I don't think it should be removed. Uh, I I think it's it's a potentially fun feature that just has not appealed to a major population of players yet, and it probably can be fun uh, for players who got used to all of these maps and their mirrored modes. This will be the one event I am uncertain about, but perhaps a mirrored game mode can be created, which in which all of the maps are mirrored, uh, including AVM and Decaying Silo. And the sole reason people would join this game mode would be to challenge their muscle memory and try to adapt to the mirrored additions of the in-game maps. Another thing that needs to be done is to fix the fog so that maps like Blue Moon don't look so ugly and like they legit turn Blue Moon into Blue Nightmare. Maps with fog like Satomi Springs and Decaying Silo work, but they just don't when it comes to other maps and like they, they could maybe those maps could either get special modifications or just prevent these maps from having the option of a fog event in the first place. And another thing about fog, I think the event should be disabled for highlighted maps for the time it is highlighted, just because it'll be really difficult to learn the map when there's a fog event. And instead they should make the escapee or lost page event more common in those maps so that people can learn this location of these features faster and get used to them more quickly for when uh, the map either gets made permanently or removed. Anyways, that's all I really want to talk about when it came to possible improvements the game could make. Again. I'm not a game developer, so you can take all of these suggestions and throw them in the garbage. But uh, currently, I think FE2 is overall in a good state. Where just really, where all it really needs to do right now is to keep adding quality highlight maps, while also maybe rolling out some new feature or update once in a while. But let me know what features you would change in the game, and if you agree with my thoughts in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and a sub, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.